Have you ever heard something or read something and you thought, wow, this is new, this is fresh. There are new ideas in the air. Feels like spring. Well, if so, you will recognize how I felt when I came across an article that was recommended to us by Sherry for Heard Online. Sherry is one of the graduates from our immunity program. She, by the way, said she would be a guest here uh, at one point, so I'm looking forward to that. But she sent me uh, a message on Instagram saying, hey, Daniel, this was a nice article. And I immediately, when I saw it, I was like, wow, yeah, this is really nice. We should totally uh, you know, share this on Heard, in a Heard Online episode. So here we are. Let us jump right into it without further ado. It is an article from the New York Times. Uh, and the headline uh, reads, lean into negative emotions. It is the healthy thing to do. As a reminder of a haircut popping up. Okay. Um, so first of all, we're going to, you know, look at the, the headline itself and deploy our trigger meter. How triggering is this headline? I don't think it's triggering at all. Maybe I'll give it a one. And the reason I, I, am a, I have a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of a comment I have here and it's the word healthy. And, and when we when we combine like emotions and healthy, it can be tricky because healthy can sound sound like it, it, it we talking about health as in kind of like diabetes, cancer, you know, heart disease, those th th that type of health, which emotions really have nothing to do with. Uh, so it, it can be a little tricky. But when we, when we start to think our emotions affect kind of our you know physical health, th that that can be tricky. But I don't think you know it was meant to be triggering at all. I, I think I, th I think, think this was a nice uh, you know a nice title. And let's read the subtitle here. Recent research suggests that while bad feelings can affect our well-being, your perspective on those feelings can play an even bigger role in your mental health. And you know, you know, when we read the first part, like bad feelings can affect your well-being. I think the interesting thing that just comes to me as we're reading this is that this whole article is about sort of like not judging our emotions, or it's about that. And then we have kind of a little bit of a judgy word, like the bad feelings. But again, it's for communication purposes. So I think the interesting thing here is that the author is saying that, you know, feeling bad can affect our well-being. Well, isn't that sort of like the whole thing about well-being is, is kind of it's a reflection of our emotions? I don't know, not super clear, but but I think the second part is the one that really matters, that it's kind of like how we judge our feelings, that is what truly matters. And this part is what made me think like, oh, this is like spring in the air, this is new, this is different, this is really exciting. So um, if we continue reading on, uh, Melinda Wenner Moyer says, um, we're nervous about an upcoming work presentation. The lament, uh, then lament our lack of confidence. We get angry at our partner, then feel guilty about our impatience. Our emotions undoubtedly influence our well-being, or maybe we should say they are, you know, they sort of are our well-being, you know, something like that. But recent research suggests that how we judge and react to those uh, emotions may affect us even more. And like, again, this part, I, I, I can't agree more uh, uh, with the author. I think this is so, so true. Like we all have kind of an emotional spectrum, like every day we humans uh, experience emotions, but how we judge them and how we think about them, that is what truly matters, right? 100% agree with that. Now, um, uh, now it says, in a study published last month in the journal Emotion, researchers found that people who habitually judge negative feelings, such as sadness, fear, and anger as bad or inappropriate, have more anxiety and depression symptoms and feel less satisfied with their lives than people who generally perceive their negative emotions in a positive or neutral light. I clicked this link and it led to a study. And when I did some more digging, I tried to actually find the full study. I did not, but I found the dissertation that actually I, I think is kind of the basis for the study. So I wanna share that with you. Um, and here it is. The uh, title of the dissertation is very similar. Judging emotions as good or bad, individual differences, links with emotional responses, and implications for psychological health. Health by uh, Emily Wilroth uh, is, I think, the um, the doctoral candidate, and Iris Moss is, I'm assuming, the the supervisor or uh, yes, uh, advisor here. And so this is the abstract, kind of the summary of the the thesis. And uh, Emily Wilroth said the following: People are not impassive bystanders to their emotional experiences. 
Instead, people tend to judge their emotions as good or bad. And, you know, so simply, so nicely put, but I think it's something that we often don't even think about. Oftentimes, we're, we just think that emotions are there to annoy us or to make us, you know, to, to, to um, entertain us or something like that. But they have practical purposes, which they talk about more uh, later on. But also, like, we often have, you know, an emotional reaction to our emotions that then can really, like, amplify them uh, or, or nullify them maybe, but really, really uh, nicely put there. And then she says, in this research, I examined individual differences in emotion judgments and their implications for emotional responses and psychological health. And there are four studies, actually. Study one, which had more than a thousand participants, I developed a questionnaire to assess four types of habitual emotion judgments. The four types of emotion judgments uh, differed according to the balance of the emotion being judged positive or negative and the balance of the judgment uh, positive or negative. So in other words, uh, my understanding is that she says we can think of an emotion as, you know, pleasant or unpleasant. And then we can think of that, you know, having that emotion as kind of good or bad, like, so that, you know, so that gives us kind of four, there can be kind of four outcomes. We can have like, let's say a positive emotion. And we think that is positive, a positive emotion. We think that's negative a negative emotion. And we think that's negative or a negative emotion. And we think that's positive. That kind of becomes the four outcomes. I think she validated a questionnaire there. And um, in study number two, um, she examined the relationship between ha habitual emotion judgments and emotion judgments in daily life and concluded that emotion judgments are common in da daily life uh, and were predicted by habitual emotion judgments. Um, in study three, uh, she examined the transactional associations between habitual emotion judgments and psychological health and found that positive judgments of positive emotions was associated with greater psychological health and negative judgments of negative emotions was associated with poor psychological health above and beyond other type of emotion judgments and they and key conf confounds. In the last study, she examined the perspective link between habitual emotion judgments and psychological health over one month. And I felt, I felt that part was maybe not as relevant to what we were talking about here. But this was, uh, I think, the kind of the underlying uh, study that the, the article in the New York Times and the article in the journal Emotion was based upon. And, you know, uh, the, the, I would say this, that it, it may not sound, sound like rocket science, but I think, again, it is it, it, like, if you think like, oh, well, people who think their emotions are positive, they had better mental health, they felt better than people who judge their emotions as negative. Well, of course, that's kind of a no-brainer, sort of. Yeah, I guess it's it's sort of not surprising. But again, this whole idea that how we think about our emotions, that that has impact, I think this is really, really nice to see in, in like the New York Times, and it's it's really new and fresh. So, uh, yeah, with, with having having looked at the underlying, you know, study here, um, let us go back to the New York Times article, keep reading, and I think it, you know, it just gets better and better, really. Um, the author here says that the findings add to a growing body of research that indicates people fare better when they accept their unpleasant emotions as appropriate and healthy rather than trying to fight or suppress them. I don't have to comment on that much because, you know, this is basically what you hear us teach about here on the channel all the time. Um, many of us have this implicit belief that emotions themselves are bad. They're going to to do something bad to us, says Iris Moss, a social psychologist who studies emotions at the University of California, Berkeley, and co-author of the new study. Most of the time she said emotions don't do harmful things. It's actually the judgment that causes the suffering. Now, next question says, why judging your feelings can backfire? When we perceive our emotions as bad, we pile more bad feelings onto our existing ones, which makes us feel even worse says Emily Willerath, who, who was the um, author here. And um, I think that, um, and, and then someone says, what, what we resist persists here. Uh, I would say this, that I think this is, I mean, in, in the moment, uh, I think that is very, very true. If we feel kind of like we feel angry and then we feel angry that we feel angry, then there's just more anger, right? So we pile on to an unpleasant emotion by having an unpleasant emotion or you know, kind of emotional reaction to the initial reaction. Very, very true. But I think there's also this other element uh, that we, we talk a lot about uh, on this channel, which is the sort of uh, training 
our brain to look at emotions as unwanted, as threats, so that, uh, you know, we're sort of like in a more long-term perspective, when we judge an emotion as bad, unwanted, a threat, then we're kind of priming our brain to think of it as a threat and it wants to avoid it, it wants to fight it. And, uh, and then we have this phenomenon which we call ampli amplification, which is basically that, you know, if we think of our emotions as a way that our body communicates with us, if we're trying to avoid communication, then, you know, the brain's just gonna be like, oh, this didn't get across. We need to amplify this. So in addition to this kind of piling a bad emotion onto a bad emotion, you know, an unpleasant emotion to an unpleasant emotion, I should say, I think we have this more long-term effect of like, you know, training ourselves, our brain to think of an, an emotion as a threat, which then really amplifies it because we're going to try to escape that threat, which I think, um, you know, wasn't necessarily uh, uh, highlighted so much in this article. But I think there are just two more things uh, I wanted to really, really point out. And, and where is that? Here. Well, let's, let, let's go, go over the last part here. How to make peace with your feelings, right? It's kind of a logical way to, place to end this article because, you know, we all struggle with unpleasant emotions. How, how should we uh, meet that? Well, the author says, first, remember that unpleasant feelings are part of the human experience. Normalizing it, you know, very, very nice. No emotion is inherently bad or appropriate. No judgment, you know, needed. Like, you know, no emotion is inherently bad or in, in, inappropriate. I think this is just like, again, one of those sentences that looks like looks like an unremarkable sentence, but to say that no emotion is inappropriate is basically saying something very similar to what we always say, that emotions are just like, they have practical purposes. And the, the reason we can sometimes have a strong, unpleasant emotion in a circumstance that we see, we see no reason for it is because there has been some type of like confusion in the brain, some kind of misunderstanding, and it deploys an emotion that the situation didn't call for it, but that doesn't mean it's inappropriate. I think this is amazing what Dr. Willer said here. Uh, negative, oh, here we go. Negative feelings can even serve a purpose. Exactly. Anxiety can help you to face a potential threat. Anger can help you stand up for yourself. Sadness can signal to other people that you're needing uh, their social support. Exactly what we always talk about. However, the practical purpose of emotions right there. Uh, amazing. Um, now, when you experience a bad feeling, you don't have to love the feeling. Just try to feel neutral about it. Uh, and uh, this, and over here, the new study found that people who reacted neutrally were just as psychologically healthy as those who reacted more positively. And I will, I won't go further. I will, I'll, you know, end the review of the article there. But a little commentary on this last part, which is, I find it somewhat surprising that. It appears, without going deep into the dissertation or anything like that, it appears that the authors found that, I guess, a significant amount of the people they asked had a positive take on a unpleasant emotion, basically saying, yeah, when I feel sad, I think that's good. And I'm, like, surprised by that. Like, who, <laughs> who, would, who would honestly say that? Uh, but the, the part where they talk about neutrality here, that makes more sense to me that, you know, we can say something like, yeah, I feel sad. And, you know, that it's okay to feel sad, you know, having kind of the neutral um, uh, response, if you will. That to me sounds quite human, quite understandable. Uh, but the point here is that when when you, you read the last thing they said here, which was that we don't have to have a positive response to an unpleasant emotion, but we can have more of a neutral response to it. That to me makes sense. It sounds doable. And here's the thing that confused me in kind of the dissertation because they just they basically said that people who positively judge a positive emotion overall, you know, were feeling more well than people who negatively judge a negative emotion. To me, it's kind of like confusing because it, it to me it's like, isn't it the same thing? Doesn't that lead to this roller coaster phenomenon when we say like, I celebrate in a positive emotion, I, I, I judge myself for negative emotion. Isn't that sort of the same thing? Both lead to performance anxiety, both lead to this, this state where we think like, oh, I have to try to achieve positive emotion or I have to escape negative emotion. Aren't those kind of just polarities? And it makes me wonder if the people who fill out the questionnaire weren't really sort of like, you know, answering in a way that maybe wasn't entirely accurate, meaning I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that some people said, 
who said like I have a positive reaction to positive emotion, maybe it was more neutral, right? Maybe they 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 were more like I feel great and that's that's nice rather than I feel great and that's great because that will lead to kind of this like loop of performance anxiety, I think. So uh, yeah, just I feel like maybe I'm adding too much commentary, but <laughs> overall, I want to say that I was really, really, really glad to see this. I feel like, yeah, there's spring, there are new ideas out there. Maybe this was just one isolated article. Maybe not. Maybe this is the beginning of kind of like new ways to think of it, like seeping through popular culture and leading to more and more peace of mind and, you know, less and less struggle. Who knows? But I can say that this was, a, in my opinion, a super, super nice article. Hope you enjoyed it too. And as always, let me know what you thought about the article, about my commentary, about anything else you have on your mind. You know, share that in the comment section and uh, uh, that will be very appreciated. Uh, you know, lead to more discussion, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, thank you for being here. Look forward to having you uh, on, uh, having you back real soon. Until then, take it easy. Bye-bye.